Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So we'll do some examples on this um, VSC PR theory. Uh, find out the structure of these molecules or ions. So for the first one is IO3, F2 minus, IO2, F2 minus, XEO2, XEF4, XEF2, XEF2, ICL3, NO3 minus, NO2 minus, Done, finished. If you know the bond pair and lone pair, you can find out the shape, no?
Yes. Uh, so you see this. Uh, first of all, we'll find out the valence electron. So valence electron for this one is seven for iodine, seven for chlorine. So seven into three plus six into three plus one because one negative charge is there. 21 plus 1, 22 plus 18, that is 40 electrons we have. So we can say 5 bond pair and 0 lone pair here. So 5 bond pair and 0 lone pair, the structure is TBB, tetrahedral, sorry, geometry and shape is trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, here if you see the valence electron, 7 plus 21 plus 1, 22, 22 plus 12, that is 34. Is it 34? Thirty-four, right? So thirty-four divided by eight. So we have four bond pair and one lone pair. Geometry, if you see, geometry is TBP, trigonal bipyramidal, right? Shape is what? Shape is here seesaw. Seesaw, the shape is. If you look at the you know geometry here, so what we do? We draw a triangle. Just to understand the shape, we draw a triangle. It's not like the bonding is there, just to understand it, right? And we have, suppose, uh, uh, one atom present over here. That is I, okay? One lone pair will be at this position, any one of these three. So I'll place it here. And then, to fluorine and to oxygen. If you look at this, this looks like a seesaw geometry, okay? One more thing is important here, I'll just explain it here only. In trigonal bipyramidal geometry, there are two types of bond length in trigonal bipyramid, okay? This bond, this bond is the axial bond. Right down here. This two bond, IF, IF2 bond we have. This is this is axial bond. And this three bond, one, two, and three, these are equatorial. Equatorial bond. We have two different bond lengths also. Suppose the axial bond has bond length L1, equatorial has L2. So the bond length of axial bond L1 is greater than L2. Okay, this you must take care of. The bond angle here you see between this bond and the plane of the triangle, this bond angle is 90 degree. This bond angle is 120. This is 120 in the plane of the triangle. And this bond angle between this bond and this plane here, plane of the triangle, it is 90 degree. Two different bond angle we also have here. So if you have one lone pair, yes, Haryana. If you have one lone pair, it will place over here. If you have two lone pair, another corner of the triangle. Three lone pair, another corner of the triangle. Right? So this position will place the electron because the bond angle is 120, and here we have lesser repulsion. Okay? This you must take care of for TBP, trigonal bipyramidal. You can't see it is a seesaw. See, suppose we have a line. This one line is coming towards me. This part is coming towards me. And this part is going towards you into the plane of the screen, right? So this is the, you can say here, this particular thing is placed. So this looks like a seesaw. This part is nothing but this bond. And we have this line. Okay. The bond angle you are talking about. No, here it, see, ideally, I, this is the ideal thing I'm talking about. Okay. This 120 is for ideal when there is no lone pair. I should not place a lone pair over here. This is for the ideal thing I'm talking about. 
when there is no loan pair. Yeah, this angle is lesser than 120. If there is loan pair present, then this angle is lesser than 120. Okay, XeO2, the number of valence electron you see for XeO2, 8 plus 2 into 6, that is 20. Right, so we have uh, two bond pair and two lone pair. Right, so it is geometry is tetrahedral. Shape is what? Is V shape. We also call it as bent shape or we also call it as angular. All three are same thing. XeF4, valence electron, 8 plus 7 into 4. That is 36. So four bond pair and two lone pair. Geometry is what? Octahedral, square by pyramid. Shape is square planar. Clear? No doubt. Okay, next one. XeF2, valence electron is 8 plus 14, 22. So we have a two bond pair and uh, three lone pair. See, the bond pair is always equals to the number of outer atom. Two chlorine atoms, two bond pair we must have. More than two, it's not possible. Okay, three chlorine atoms, so you'll see here, three bond pair must be there. Right, so it is, geometry is what? Geometry is TBP, trigonal by pyramid. What is the shape? Shape is linear. All three lone pair present in the corner of the triangle. Okay. ICL3, valence electron, 7 into 4, 28. So we have three bond pair. See, three outer atom, three bond pair. And two lone pair. So it is T shape. Geometry is again TVP. And it is T shape. NO2, nitrogen is 5. Sir, the bond pair can never be more than the, like, uh, more than outer the outer. Atom. Yeah. Yeah, it's not possible. Okay. Valence electron, NO3. So we have 5 for this, 6 for this. So 6 into 3, 18, 18 plus 1, 19 plus 5, 24. So we have 3 bond pair here. And 0 lone pair. Right? So it is uh, trigonal planar. Geometry and shape. NO2 minus. It has valence electron is 18. So it has two bond pair and one lone pair. So it is also uh, what is the geometry? Geometry is trigonal planar. Shape is it's V shape. Two and one, you see, bent or V shape. Understood? Few more examples we'll do. Find out for CH4, NH3, H2.
dan what is the number of valence electron you are getting here yes here the trick does not apply since hydrogen form duplet it does not form octet okay so what you need to do whenever write down one note here if hydrogen is the outer atom if hydrogen is the outer atom then we divide it by 2 then we divide it by 2 okay so all the molecules you see the valence electron is 8 8 so we divided by 2 so number of uh, you see this 8 divided by 2 we are getting 4 here and no remainder so in this we have four outer atoms so number of bond pair 4 lone pair 0 here we have only three outer atoms out of four the number of bond pair is 3 and lone pair is 1 3 plus 1 4 here outer atom is only 2 so number of bond pair is 2 and lone pair is 2 so all these are tetrahedral geometry this one is pyramidal shape pyramidal And here the shape is V shape, V bent angle. <laughs> Done. Tell me, no doubt, understood all of you? To find out the geometry and shape. right okay write down next factors affecting bond angle the last you know thing for today factors affecting bond angle the first one you write down effect of lone pair on central atom in that case we have to draw the structure mother if you have different kinds of atom then we have to draw the structure in that case okay we cannot do it by this method okay actual thing is that lewis order structure that you need to draw okay these are the trick so it maybe it it won't apply for all the molecules but with this particular thing you can do most of the question 99% of the question you can solve if there are different kinds of atoms hydrogen plus any other atoms present then actual thing is that only you find out the valence electron draw lewis dot structure and then you find out the number of bond pair you can find out from that okay write down as the number of electrons on lone pair on central atom increases bond angle decreases 
number of electrons on central atom increases this example we have theta 1 theta 2 and oxygen theta 3 so theta 1 is maximum then theta 2 and then theta 3 as the number of lone pairs on central atom increases bond angle decreases second one effect of multiple bond effect of multiple bond right on the multiple bond contains more charge and hence causes more repulsion more repulsion which increases the bond angle which increases the bond angle so if this is theta 1 this would be also theta 1 this would be theta 2 so here because of the double bond theta 1 is greater than theta 2 multiple bond causes more repulsion multiple bond contains more charge causes more repulsion bond angle increases third point effect of electronegativity of central atom effect of electronegativity of central atom right down as the electronegativity of central atom increases bond angle increases as the electronegativity of central atom increases bond angle increases nh3 and ps3 you see what happens here obviously theta 1 is the bond angle here theta 2 is the bond angle here then the theta 1 the bond angle is greater than theta 2 why it happens you see since nitrogen is more electronegative it drags the bond pair of electron towards its side so here the bond pair electrons are towards the nitrogen atom hence they are coming closer and this tendency is more because of the more electronegativity of nitrogen they are coming closer hence produces more repulsion and the bond angle expand here theta 1 is more than theta 2 then okay fourth one effect of electronegativity you want me to go back pranav okay just a second of outer atom i'll share the notes anyways not a problem okay of electronegativity of out 
it down. As the electronegativity of outer atom increases, bond angle decreases. Electronegativity of outer atom increases, bond angle decreases. Just reverse of the previous one. But in this, you have some, we have some exception that you must remember. In case of H2O, the bond angle is theta 1. In case of F2O, the bond angle is theta 2. In case of Cl2O, the bond angle is theta 3. Right? This is an exception here. Here the order is theta 3 is maximum, then theta 2 and then theta 1. Right? This is an exception you must remember. Okay? One more exception we have here. In case of PF3 and PH3. The bond angle of PF3 is more than to that of PH3. And this is also an exception we have. Understood? Yes, ideally it should be, chlorine should be lesser, least, then chlorine and then H. But it is other way actually. Double bond will have the mole preference. When you have a double bond present, so we just simply consider the bond pair, bond pair repulsion. Okay, Aitya. Fine, guys. So we are done for this for the session today. Okay. Next class, you remind me. We'll start the new theory here theory of bonding that is valence bond theory okay so all of you write down the heading valence bond theory we will start this in the next class it's the lewis chart structure i'm sorry just a second see the valence electron you are getting is 32 so sulfur oxygen 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 and oxygen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And each of these oxygen atoms has 6 lone pairs. So 3 lone pairs electron. And there is no lone pair on the sulfur atom. Now in this the negative charge, the formal charge is negative, 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 negative and plus 2 on the sulfur atom. According to the rule, when you have a hypervalent atom, the charge on the central atom should be either the charge on the ion which is minus 2 or 0. Right? So in order to make it 0, we'll shift one pair of electron from oxygen to make a double bond over here. So one pair will shift here, another pair will shift here. The advantage of this is what? Both oxygen atom will have 0 formal charge. Sulfur, sulfur will also have 0 and oxygen has two negative charge here. So this is the Lewis structure of SO4 2 minus according to the uh, rules that we have. Now, why can't we make uh, any double bond here and make it to minus two? Because if you do this, then sulfur will have two negative charge, oxygen will have zero charge here. If any negative charge you have to place,
then we'll try to place the negative charge on more electronegative atom, which is oxygen here, not sulfur. That's why this structure is more stable than the other one. Hence the structure is this. Clear? Fine, so heading all of you write down valence bond theory. We'll start in the next class. Let me know this, valence bond theory we have to start. In this only, we'll see the bonding, the hybridization theory we'll discuss here only. Okay? Solve uh, the modules questions related to VSEPR. I'll share one PDF also with you on this VSEPR. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.